this opportunity to speak. My name is Ian Avery, and I live in mic, for, for Leonard Lane. And I first want to thank the town board um, for your integrity, for your courage, and your commitment to protect the safety, welfare, and quality of life of the residents of the town of Shenango by moving forward on a moratorium against hydrocrafting in our town. I would disagree with many that have already spoken saying that you haven't done your job or that it's unpatriotic to ask for a moratorium. In fact, it is just the opposite. I feel you are doing your job, a very good job, and a hard job by moving forward and considering a moratorium. And I think so for many reasons. First, as a community, a moratorium will provide the time and opportunity to consider all of the data and the new evidence that's out there. And as someone in science, I understand it's very complex and it's often controversial. So it takes time to do the homework and do the research. And we encourage you to take the time and opportunity on which a moratorium will allow for you to do that. Second, along with Terry Matthews, I encourage you in your vision, in the comprehensive plan, in the moratorium to strongly think about the quality of life issues of the town. That is why many of us live here, choose to be here. Many in the community have stated that is the top quality. So please consider the rural quality of life. Both people that are pro and against drilling in Pennsylvania, recent data has shown, are saddened by the loss of their rural quality and bucolic nature because of the rapid industrialization. We in the concerned citizens of the town of Shenango have found this is not a partisan issue. In fact, it's democracy at its best when a group of people who are Republicans, Democrats, Tea Party members, independents who come together to fight for something we think is worth fighting for, which is the rural quality of life. And we encourage you to keep that in mind in your vision. And last, there is an opportunity for jobs. We are not closing the door. Rather, I encourage you to be visionaries and to think of sustainable, responsible development. The town of Shenango can be a place, a safe haven against fracking, a place for clean air, for clean water, a gem for generations to come. So please come from a place of strength during this moratorium and take the opportunity and the time it will allow. Come from a place of strength and vision to keep the quality of life in our town, to explore and reimagine ways develop that don't have the dire consequences of fracking. And lastly, to please remember we can be a safe zone and to not come from a place of weakness. Some things are worth fighting for and some things we lose, we lose forever. Thank you. Um, I'm Susan Dorsey number 22, and I'm from the town of Smithville in Shenango County. Um, I am not in favor of the moratorium. I am in favor of responsible gas development. Um, on section two, paragraph two of local law number three of this year, it says that it's not the intention of the town to address matters of statewide concern. Well, gas is of statewide concern. The gas resource does not obey municipal boundaries. Pipeline infrastructure to deliver the gas does not follow municipal boundaries. That's one reason why the state is the regulatory agency for this industry. That's why they have kept control of regulating the oil and gas industry at the state level. You, in the same paragraph that says that you are, um, uh, you, this is a way of enforcing land use policy. Um, land use policy is gonna, if you enforce a moratorium, it may open you up to liability because a moratorium is taking an action. A moratorium is not buying time as people are, are referring to, because you can just delay without enacting the moratorium, and that will give you time to study whatever you need to study. A moratorium is an action, and an action by the board will open you up to liability. The minute the state begins permitting, you'll have exposure if you have a moratorium in place. 
Now, speaking about land use, um, I do not believe, I've been in uh, real estate, real estate appraisal, and uh, real estate tax assessment um, for the majority of, of my working life. Um, I disagree that gas development is an industrial use because if you take the long-term view of gas development, in 50 years or so, that gas well will be depleted and the land will be reclaimed to what it is now, rolling pasture or forest. If you don't allow large landowners and farmers to develop their gas, they will subdivide and once a land goes to residential or commercial use, it never reverts to forest or to pasture agricultural use. So take the long view, keep it rural, and no more trium thank you. Thank you. Sabina, um, I'm strongly for, oh, I'm strongly, well, it's a lot louder, for the monitorium. Twelve years ago, my husband and I and our two kids moved to town of Shenango. We could have moved anywhere. I've lived in a lot of places, but we chose this place. This place because it was quiet and beautiful and a really good place to raise our kids. We moved here because it was less stressful and less noisy and a little less dirty than a lot of other places we've looked at. If this town opens its arms to fracking, there's a small chance that it will still be quiet and safe and beautiful, but most likely we're not going to wait around to see if that small possibility becomes true. We're going with the knowledge, the indisputable facts of what has happened to numerous small communities throughout the U.S when they have invited fracking into their neighborhoods. And I know it's not in every community, but the facts are there completely that there have been many, many communities that have been so badly affected with property values plummeting, banks refusing mortgages, traffic increasing astronomically, wells becoming questionable and accidents just waiting to happen. When we hear the town of Shenang is potentially opening, open for fracking, we ask ourselves three questions. Do we move now, do we move later, or do we stick around? The fact is, we're not the only ones asking themselves these questions. My suggestion is, don't wait too long to decide to say no to fracking in our neighborhoods, otherwise families like us will move and others will never move in. I ask, why would an engineer, a police officer, a teacher, a doctor move their families to our town and when, there, when there is fracking? Wouldn't they rather move to an equally beautiful place where they don't have to worry about their property value plummeting and massive trucks and roads and incessant noise and potential polluted wells? Wouldn't they just put a cross on our town and look elsewhere? Like I said, don't wait too long to sign to say no to fracking in our neighborhoods. Or people who can afford to will never move in and many, many families will move out. Good evening, members of the board. Good evening, members of the board. My name is Alan Wilfred Slope, and I live at 11 Kelly Road and I am a 10th generation American, here to speak against not only the ill-conceived notion of a local moratorium, but any town action contrary to the as yet unpublished DEC study. New York State has spent years and millions of dollars gathering scientific evidence as to the environmental impacts of gas drilling and hydrofracking in particular. The town of Shenango or any other local government lacks the, the background and scientific wherewithal to rule on hydrofracking one way or the other. We're paying New York State to do that, and they're spending that money hopefully wisely, but they're our best shot at getting it right. There's a lot at stake here. This is a very complex issue. I urge you to allow the DEC scientists to complete their study and implement safe, properly regulated gas drilling. All this says nothing about the economic impacts that will go on for decades, decades. The drillers come in, and I, I've been down in Tawanda 
in Susquehanna County where my family lived for six generations. And I've seen all the stuff that they did. And they do ra raise a fair amount of havoc for four or five weeks. And then they, they clean up the roads are 10 times what they were before they got here. And everything is fine. They, they drilled a gas well right across the, the road from a club that I go to on a regular basis in Tawanda. And now that they're gone, the road's 10 times better than it was. And unless you knew that there was a gas well over there, it, it, it's transparent. But the money rolls in for decades, decades. And sure, some of those take, people will take the money and run to Florida, but a lot of us won't. And, and that money will be spent here in our community, in our stores, and it'll have an economic impact that's lasting. Thank you. Number 25. <laughs> My name is Elaine Perkis. I live at 1617 State Route 12 here in the town of Shenango. Thank you for having this very important hearing. The DEC deliberately misled the public about its gas and oil regulatory programs. The underlying premise of the Supplemental Generic Environmental Impact Statement is DEC's assertion that, quote, as a result of New York's rigorous regulatory process, the types of problems reported to have occurred in states without such strong environmental laws and rigorous regulations haven't happened here, end quote. That is why an entirely new GEIS was not required to safeguard New Yorkers from shale gas fracturing. In reality, DEC self-documented inadequate regulation of gas and oil extraction activities resulted in thousands of unresolved pollution threats to public health and the environment, notably Extraordinary drinking water contamination problems in the Southern Tier region, where gas and oil extraction has been common for decades. In one case involving, involving the Perkins family in Bolivar, New York authorities identified 12,971,000 parts per billion of petroleum contamination in their drinking water and traced the pollution to a nearby production well. New York prohibits more than 50 parts per billion of any toxic pollutant in drinking water. Randy Harmswell in Sissio, New York, was similarly contaminated with crude oil. Citizens complained for years about their toxic water, but to no avail. DEC permitted dumping billions of gallons of contaminated gas and oil production dry brine into pits, ponds, lagoons, streams, and onto roads without any treatment to remove toxic metals, petroleum hydrocarbons, and radionuclides. Up to hundreds of millions of gallons of produced brine was disposed of annually using these practices, which continue to this day. Brine pits were required to be eliminated 25 years ago, but that has yet to happen. DEC identified more than 4,700 abandoned, unplugged gas and oil wells that pose major pollution hazards. The unplugged wells have been found in residential yards, playgrounds, school grounds, forests, Wetlands and waterways, DEC acknowledged this problem decades ago, but has failed to resolve it. The total expense of plugging these abandoned wells could be tens or hundreds of millions of dollars. Available plugging funds were approximately $200,000 in 2009. For all the above reasons, it is abundantly clear that we cannot count on the DEC to protect us. Our town must have its own rigorous protections. And as you know, this takes time. That is why I support the Town of Shenango proposed one-year moratorium on hydrofracking. Thank you. Thank you. 26. <coughs> All right. I'm Edward Rice. I live at 366 Dimmick Kill Road. I've lived there since 1968. Raised family in this town. Paid taxes in this town. I don't have a lot of land in this town, so I'm not land poor like a lot of the 11,000 that might live in this town. Land poor and overtaxed. I don't have a lot of written material. And there's been a lot of speakers before me that said probably everything I want to say, so I'm just leaving me short. 
But I do have one thing that I'd like to read that was a building block from our founders years before I was born, and they wrote it better than I could write it. I'd like to say that our founding fathers specifically designed <coughs> excuse me, a society that was produced, has produced more wealth and a higher standard of living for the common man than has ever been known in the history of mankind. The center of this system was a limited government, a constitutional republic whose economic root structure was embedded in the capitalist free enterprise system. Former U.S. Secretary of Agriculture Ezra Taft Benson, who was at that time a current prophet and president of the Church of the Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, listed four fundamental principles which allowed the U.S. to progress so rapidly and freely. First, a written constitution clearly defining the limits of government so that government will not become more powerful than the people. Second, an economic system which is characterized by free enterprise, the right to venture, the right to choose, private property, the right to own, develop, and enjoy, a market economy, the right to exchange and to profit. Third, building an open society where such individuals enjoys the greatest opportunity to improve himself, to travel, to become educated, to invent, to compete, to build, to speak, to worship, and to, the, to purpose happiness in whatever way the individual feels most satisfying and worthwhile. Fourth, I'm out of time. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, thank you. Purpose 1617 State Route 12. The town Board's Obligations. Town Boards are obligated to protect town roads, houses, and water. Number one, the DEC cannot protect any roads. The DEC is not empowered to protect town roads, county roads, or state roads. The protection of town roads is totally up to the town, not the county, not the state. If the town fails to enact a road use ordinance, the taxpayers will be obligated to pay the repair damage done by frack trucks. The drillers are not liable for such repairs, absent a town ordinance. Number two, the DEC will not protect homes, businesses, or water supplies. The DEC's setbacks of a gas well from the structures and water supplies is the worst in the United States. The DEC's regulatory setbacks for shale gas wells virtually guarantee that water wells will be contaminated and homeowners will lose their mortgages and insurance. The DEC is notoriously lax in enforcing its own regulations. No town can rely on the DEC to protect water supplies or the built environment that is not the DEC's job. It's the town's responsibility to do so. The DEC, in fact, is mandated by Article 23 of the New York State Environmental Conservation Law to, quote, maximize the efficiency with which oil and gas are extracted. As interpreted by the DEC, this leaves the protection of land uses and drinking water up to the town. Number three, the town board is obligated to protect roads and land uses. It is not only the town's right to protect its roads, if the town board reasonably believes that the roads will be damaged by frack trucks, it's the town board's obligation to do something about it. The same obligation applies to protecting land uses and water supplies. And I'll quote, it is a legislature's right, and particularly in matters of land use and planning, its obligation as well to anticipate future problems and to enact measures to guard against them, though in fact the anticipated events may never come to pass. That's a legal citation from Town of Huntington versus Park Shore Country Day Camp, 1979. The conclusion of the Dryden and Middlefield courts was that the DEC regulates how a gas well is drilled, but the town regulates where they are drilled and has an obligation to protect land uses within the town, as towns do in other states. Number four, the DEC's regulations were written by the gas industry. The state's compulsory integration law was written word for word by Chesapeake lobbyists. 
as enforced by the DEC is the worst compulsory integration law in the United States. The shale gas regulations were drafted by, drafted by Chesapeake's lobbyist, who has been given drafts to review to ensure that the DEC staff got the wording right, and I have the citations for that. Chesapeake did not write these regulations to protect houses, roads, and drinking water. So for these reasons and a few more, and I'll leave these for your review, I support the moratorium, and I thank you. Thank you. Would 31 through 40 please come up here, please? like to see, uh, I'm pro-gas leasing, and I have faith, as I say, in our state, and it takes a lot of responsibility off from the town of Shenango. And so I just would like to see us in this town have a tremendous unity amongst us. That's my biggest concern amongst all of us. And I am a very active person in this community. I've seen the schools built, and I'm sure the oil industry is going to help carry along the financial load of our schools, our roads, and our all of institutions that we need in our town of Shenango, and help us out with our taxes. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Dan Fadden. I live at 25 Michael Road. I've been a resident for about 45 years in this town. I'd like to thank the board for the opportunity to speak. And more importantly, I'd like to thank the board for safeguarding the dem democratic process. Pro-fracking or anti-fracking, we must not abandon the ideals and principles that make our democracy the envy of the world. I would like to ask the board to please keep in mind as I speak and subsequent speakers get their chance that this hearing is about what is right for our town, not the county, not the state, and not the country at large. I am not an activist. I've never been involved in anything like this before. The only reason I stand before you here tonight is to defend my home, my family's health, and a quality of life that I feel will be sorely missed here in the town of Shenango should we decide to move ahead with fracking. Additionally, I'm here to protect my investment. Much of my retirement plan is in the value of my home. What will happen to the value of my home when the beautiful hillside I look out at behind my house is a drill pad? What will happen when the quiet nights give way to compressors and flaring? What will my house be worth if my well is tainted? And God help us, the first time a brine-filled water truck encounters a school bus on one of our hilly, windy roads. These fears are real, and they are supported by my many friends and co-workers who live in PA that come to work where I work. They come with first-hand experiences of pollution and ruination. We cannot allow this to happen in our beautiful town. This is the place we call home, 
and we choose to live here because it is safe and clean and beautiful. I thank you for all you have done in the past to make and keep our town a great place to live. Declaring a moratorium on fracking is a prudent action and is especially prudent as more and more safety concerns, health concerns, and reports of accidents make the news every day. I can't help but think supporters of fracking are worried because as this news comes out, their chances grow a little dimmer every day. Please pass the moratorium. We have nothing to lose. The gas is going nowhere. It'll be there when these processes are developed, as should they be developed in time. Take the safe approach, and our children and their children will thank you for your wisdom and courage. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. I'm Mike McGowan, number 30. I live at 2 Howard Drive. I'm a builder developer, well, used to be, in the town of Shenango, a lifelong resident. Um, we're hearing a lot tonight about fear of the unknown. The fear of the unknown can be a very intimidating thing. You know, we hear about fear of noise. It's that same noise that I happen to be a part of an industry that makes those same noises. It's bulldozers, it's generators, it's saws, it's excavators. They used to be considered a good thing. Fear of the truck traffic. Have you seen the trucks? It's the same trucks that travel our roads every day. The concrete trucks, the blacktop trucks that pour your driveway, that put in your swimming pool, that built your house before you were there. Again, it used to be considered signs of a new and better things happening. Past year and a half, I've been building a house in Pennsylvania. Not by choice, but because I have to, because there are no homes being built in New York. Count the number of housing permits in Broome County in the last five years. You don't have to use both hands. During that time, approximately 12 wells have been drilled on the dirt road that we have been working on. It's that same well that you saw flared in the news. And if you didn't know exactly where it was, you couldn't find it. When they started after we did, they're completed after. They're completed before we're done. If it hadn't been for the gas company, we don't know how we would have made it up and down the dirt road. They had graders, rollers, sand trucks on call 24-7 on standby. Now that they're done the road, the wells are drilled, the road is better than it's ever been. The town itself, the Paulstead, is busy. Shopkeepers are happy, restaurant owners are happy, new businesses are opening weekly. People are improving their homes on the streets that we're working on. I hear a lot about the distraught people in Pennsylvania. It must be a different Pennsylvania than I'm going to. I've traveled there almost every day, like I said, for the last year and a half. Separate note, in my builder affiliations, I deal with builders all over the nation. The DEC has the strictest regulations of anywhere in the nation. When they talk about something new coming in, I talk about, well, we've had that for years. On a bigger note, I don't think this kind of decision can be made on a town-by-town -town basis. If you had the strictest regulations in the town of Shenango, and the town of Barker decided to have the most lax regulations, what good would that do us? It's the kind of thing that needs to be governed on a statewide basis. Lastly, I would ask you to look at the regulations. We hear tons of speculation. Look where wells can be placed. Look at the protections that are already involved. Let the state do its job. Thank you. Thank you. 31. Uh, my name is Dr. Richard Ferenzi, 39 Broad Acres Drive. Uh, and I'd like to thank you for agreeing to hear the thoughts from both sides of this important issue. Uh, first, I'd like to say that I personally do not look at this issue as one of good versus evil. No doubt this is a very contentious issue as it represents two disparate points of view on the future direction of the town and the entire area. And as importantly, what information shall be used as the basis to make that decision? With that in mind, I'd like to say that I cringe when I hear anyone say, let's look at the science. I have taught science for 43 years at both the graduate and undergraduate levels. I've studied and taught ecology and environmental science on five continents. There is, there is in fact no such thing as the science. There is only science, and I'm certain both sides will offer their science to support their points of view. And this will only make any decision that much more difficult. 
However, inconsistency of these data inherent in the nascent stages of any scientific inquiry begs for this moratorium. I will offer in to you data in a written response, and I will reference some of the most prestigious, non-biased, peer-reviewed journals in the field of science. But for today, I'm going to forget my passion for science and focus on two related issues. The first, perhaps less tangible than scientific data, but of equal if not greater importance being the quality of life in our town. The town of Shenango is not a place for heavy industry, and make no mistake, gas extraction is a heavy industry. I cannot see how the quality of life can go in any direction but down if hydrofracking is allowed. Drastically increased truck traffic, increased ambient noise, increased light pollution, degraded roads, plummeting property values, dirt, dust, and danger do not make for an increase in the quality of life for the vast majority of our residents. Will some benefit financially? No doubt, but not the vast majority. And even if there is a modicum of indirect financial benefits, the question remains, Will that benefit outweigh the incredible cost to our quality of life? I say no. Which leads me to my final point. Call me crazy, but I still believe in democracy. I believe in the will and the power of the people, as evidenced by this very gathering. So I have a modest proposal. Establish a moratorium, and during that time, put this up, issue up for a vote. Let the people decide. I'm confident if the voices of the people of the town can be heard, the right decision will be made. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Chris Bushnell. I represent Labor's Local 785. My name is Chris Bushnell. I represent Labor's Local 785 here in Binghamton. Our members work and live in Shenango and surrounding counties. They travel throughout these counties for work opportunities. We currently have many members traveling to Pennsylvania, um, currently working in the natural gas industry. Natural gas development across the state is estimated to bring in a billion dollars in new revenues to local and state governments, spurring the creation of new jobs for local labor. This ban will deny Shenango this opportunity. Laborers are already, are, are already losing out, sometimes joining their neighbors in Pennsylvania and realizing new job opportunities. Premature local action and our municipality would negatively impact the competitive environment of all of New York State for natural gas development and jeopardize the potential $11.4 billion in statewide economic impact. Recent studies suggest development will increase some 15 to 18, <coughs> excuse me, 15 to 18,000 jobs in the southern tier and western New York regions, which lost a combined 48,000 payroll jobs between 2000 and 2010. Already in the region, in Shimon County, there's already been new buildings, hotels, airport work, office, office expansion for the natural gas impact in Pennsylvania. State officials are developing standards to ensure the safe development of our natural gas resource based on the expertise of DEC employees and such advisors. Development of our natural gas resource is currently prohibited pending, pending the DEC plan and final approval by, by the New York State Governor. Premature local action in our municipality could negative, negative, negatively impact the competitive environment of all of New York State for natural gas development and jeopardize the potential $11.4 billion in statewide economic impact development. Preserving competitive environment or development in New York State <clears throat> compared to neighboring states will be critical to the ac economic future of our region. We, the membership of Labor's Local 785, who live here, work here, and pay taxes here, urge you to wait the release of the state's final SGEIS -E report. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, I'm uh, Josh Steinberg. This is not something I do every day. <coughs> Close enough. Um, I live at 29 Broad Acres Drive off of uh, Dorman Road. 
I'm an old-fashioned family doctor working at Wilson Hospital. I take care of adults, children, babies, and on a good day I deliver them, uh, like this afternoon. Uh, I wish to speak forcefully on this issue. This very morning, my seven-year-old son and I played in the stream and walked the trails of Wolf Park. I moved to my home in the town of Chenango because of the beauty, purity, and quiet of the gorgeous woods. We garden, we have well water, and we have peace and quiet. All of these things are threatened if fracking is permitted. I do not want heavy trucking tearing up and down Dorman Road as if it could bear it. It's eroding into the ravine under the burden of minivans and school buses. I do not want the noise keeping me and my son up. I do not want the risk to my well water, nor the water of my neighbors, nor my patients. I do not want my property value to plummet. I was already underwater and lost my life savings in the housing collapse when I had to sell in Cincinnati and move here. This week in the New York Times reported on plummeting real estate values in the counties at risk for fracking like Sullivan and Delaware, as well as across the border in Pennsylvania. And late last week, the United States Geologic Survey confirmed that fracked chemicals penetrated drinking water in Wyoming. This is not an international issue. Selling the gas beneath our town will not bring American soldiers home. The tiny impact of a tiny town in upstate New York will not change foreign policy. <laughs> there are lots of other places willing to despoil the earth for a quick dollar, such as the tar sands of Canada. This does not have to be one of them. I do not trust New York State to be protecting our interests. Our governor wants to run for president. He wants to look like a friend of industry. Yet he also wants to look like a thoughtful and careful steward of the environment and the economy. So he's decided to throw a few poor rural counties under the bus to be fracked while protecting the rest of the state. And he won't take responsibility. Instead, he's leaving decisions to local communities like our own, knowing that poor people and regions will be desperate for industry, even though the bucks are quick and fleeting and at great cost. New York State last week announced that the health department will do health impact considerations themselves rather than any independent group or commission because they don't want to slow the process down any further. New York State will reap tremendous payments for fracking. They're getting impatient and Cuomo has to move forward with his image for his presidential campaign. So we're on our own, and I mean we. This is a community issue, not an individual freedom issue. Because if my neighbors frack, but I don't, I still get the noise and the environmental damage and the risk of poisoning to my well. Unlike many neighbors who have spoken here, I have not lived here all my life. I moved here two years ago and could have chosen to live anywhere. I love my home and neighborhood. Good evening. My name is Bob Malecki. I reside at 155 Lewis Road here in the town of Shenango. I'd also like to point out that I reside 500 feet from the town of Union, who is not proposing moratorium similar to this. Uh, I am also running a small business out of my home, Malecki Consulting LLC, which I have to disclose provides environmental energy consulting services to all energy development uh, in the Northeast U.S. I have been uh, providing services to the uh, natural gas development industry for the past 10 years. I'm not here to present any facts or figures on uh, the development of the industry. What I am here is to make some observations for uh, your consideration uh, and deliberation on this moratorium. I applaud you as a citizen of uh, the town for your consideration of this, but I would like you to entertain several factors. One is a moratorium is across the board. I've heard many people talk about fracking concerns. It is not exclusive, the moratorium is not exclusively limited to fracking. It is for all natural gas development. There are other developments that go on with natural gas in the Trenton Black River that would also be adversely impacted by this. There was a statement made earlier tonight that the natural gas will not go away. We can take our time, and that's absolutely correct. It's not going to go away. But the support industry will. The support industry needs advanced understanding of what the business protocols are going to be, how they can locate their facilities, and maximize their service to the industry. Let the, let the support industry take the risk, if they're so inclined, to cite their businesses in the town of Shenango. 
to get the building permits, to do the exploration. You can't go forward with your moratorium on the actual development, but let the exploration, let the business mature and get ready to provide it if and when New York State lifts its own moratorium on the industry. Don't hamper your private enterprise within uh, the town. If I wanted to enlarge my business right now, this current proposal would preclude me from doing that. Why am I being uh, precluded from enlarging my business? I'm not doing the actual exploration myself. I'm not doing any harm to the, to the township or a taxpayer. I'm supporting other legal enterprises within the Northeast U.S. But the town of Shenango is going to send out a message. We're not open for business for anybody who's supporting energy development, good, clean energy development. I don't want to be associated with that type of town. I hope you give that further consideration. Thank you. Thank you. I'm Darrell Hartzell. I reside at 20 Pembroke Drive, and I'm number 35. Thank you for proposing this moratorium. You're sending a positive message anyone who's paid serious attention to this issue. It shows that you are paying attention and that you recognize the mind-boggling complexities that accompany high-volume slick water horizontal hydraulic fracturing. If you pass the moratorium, you will send an even more positive message. Potential home buyers will know that you appreciate the savings and sacrifice it takes to purchase a home and that you will, within your authority, protect their interests. The negative experiences being reported from out of state, tragedies in many cases, are now too numerous to ignore or deny. Buyers in New York shale country are getting skittish, and for good reason. Of course, this wouldn't come as a surprise to out of state people who are now having trouble selling their homes because of gas wells or related activities on land adjacent to their properties. Current residents of the town may sleep a little better knowing you're not going to abdicate your responsibilities and put their property values into the hands of a state agency. They may be more likely to make home improvements if they think they won't lose their investment. I've spoken to people who put plans for a new kitchen or landscaping on hold because of this uncertainty. Home improvement jobs are real jobs for local people. You'll be sending a message to the state of New York that you do not want to be stripped of your authority to determine zoning for the town. People in states where this right has been usurped are fighting back now legally with some success, but after the fact, after much damage has been done. Finally, you'll be sending the message that although the town of Shenango is open for business, the people of this town will not tolerate allowing heavy industry to have unfettered access to any of our neighborhoods. I encourage you to send these messages and pass this moratorium. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> My name is Scott Perkowski. I represent the Central Route Landowners Association. I also live in the town of Maine with my wife and three children. We hunt and fish on our property. I'm very familiar with this industry. And I'll tell you that I would have a well on my property, and my neighbors would have wells on their property. Just this Friday, past Friday, the DEC announced on Friday that it would not meet a November 29th, 2012 deadline for rulemaking, and it will reopen the public comments. And on September 20th, the DEC announced that it's conducting a health assessment by the New York State Department of Health. To the extent that your moratorium is looking for more time, you have it. We're not going to see the SGIS this year. We're going to see more public comments. The DEC has already announced that. We're not going to see the SGIS until sometime next year, perhaps if these rules are completed. And we certainly are not going to see permits for a year. More than that, we don't know. But you have that time. To the extent you're concerned about preparing road use laws, you have time. Noise ordinances, you have time. Health impacts. The state is looking at that now. You have time to do everything that you need to do without doing the moratorium. Now, there'll still be people who'll ask you to issue a moratorium simply to make a political statement. We urge you not to do that. Moratorium will do irreparable harm to the economic prospects of our town. And I want you to understand that when we talk about economic prospects, 
We're not talking about greed, and I hear that a lot. But we're talking about fiscal responsibility. We are in the greatest recession that we've seen since the Depression. We and you need to create opportunities, and this is the greatest opportunity that we will see, perhaps in our lifetimes. This is the opportunity that you'll have, but you're going to take yourself off the map for those opportunities if you label yourself as a moratorium town. Please don't do that. The city of Binghamton has already done that. The city of Binghamton passed a moratorium, and now the companies that we talk to say on a regular basis, why would we do business in a town that won't have our business? That's what you would do to your town if you label yourself as a moratorium town. The town of Windsor, for instance, by the way, recently the, the residents in the town of Windsor received their school tax bill. Their school taxes went down by 8%, and that is primarily because of the Dunbar Compression Station on Dunbar Road in the town of Windsor with a $23 million assessed value. Imagine that. Taxes go down for our schools. What an opportunity. And their school budget went up. That's never happened in my school district. It's never happened in yours either. President Obama and Mitt Romney agree that our country needs to move forward with natural gas. <laughs> when do the national parties ever agree on anything? This country was built on a can-do attitude. But these days, the loudest voices are those voices that have a can't-do philosophy. We can't do gas, we can't do wind, we can't do power lines or pipelines. Please don't join that group. We can do this for the good of our community, our state, and our country. And trust me, you have time to do it without moratorium. Thank you. <laughs> Number 37, uh, Louis Mazzagelli. Where do you do that? I'll try. Speak closer. Thank you. Okay. Uh, I've lived there since 1976. Uh, I'm in favor of a moratorium. Uh, town of Shenango is ground zero. It's a fracking question. 23 active leases signed. Uh, this is a bedroom community. Uh, we don't need the noise, the road damage, water, or air pollution. The Broome Medical Society officers have called for an in-depth, independent health study, in addition to the environmental impact study. In New York State, the DEC uh, is understaffed. There are nearly 5,000 abandoned wells that have not been properly capped. Uh, the regulation is suspect. Today's gas wells that they're talking about with the fracking are much deeper than the older wells. Uh, they would take between 65,000 gallons and 600,000 gallons to drill one well. Once that's drilled, it would take millions of more gallons of fluid and hundreds of thousands of pounds of sand uh, to develop that fracking process. Where does the water come from? Where does the wastewater go? Yes, the state is working on the uh, s guys regulations. Uh, they will be thousands of pages long. Uh, this state, this community will be under pressure to to lessen regulations, to cut taxes. So what happens to the enforcement? Uh, another consideration I have is the political pollution. Uh, one former Pennsylvania governor is a registered lobbyist. He's been compensated at the price of $900,000. The current Pennsylvania governor has received $1.6 million in campaign contributions. Hydrofracking uh, money will open the floodgates for buying influence in the uh, political arena. Um, so be very careful, please, uh, in how you resolve your part of this situation. Uh, I thank you for your holding the hearing, and I have sympathy for your situation. Thank you. <laughs> I'm a resident of Vestal, New York. I'm also the chairman of the Vestal Gas Coalition in Vestal, New York. Um, and I'm here to follow up on some earlier comments that suggest that you certainly have time with everything that Scott Krakowski advised you of. 
Uh, I think you should be well aware that plenty of time is available for a lot of the issues that have been talked about to be addressed and resolved. My purpose for being here tonight is to suggest that our coalition has emphasized education and knowledge as being key for helping us to make the right decisions. Uh, we, over the past three and a half years, to educate ourselves and the members of our community and our coalition have provided 19 open meetings, provided 64 professional speakers, covering an extremely diverse amount of topics. Everything you've probably heard here tonight, uh, we've had professionals come in and explain the pros and cons of all of those situations. Our membership went aware, way much more knowledgeable of what they needed to be addressing and concerned with. Our steering committee has addressed many of the things we could within our lease. We're advising our town board where there's been active debate between those opposing and those pro to make sure that the correct things happen that the town can manage under current law. What I would offer to you today is take the time that you have coming. You don't need a moratorium. The message is already out there that there's going to be time. You need to educate yourselves. You need to educate your community. If you go across the border and reach out to talk to all of your equals, town supervisors, boards in Bradford County and Susquehanna County, where it truly is ground zero, where it has been happening, uh, where the truth and the folk law seem to be coming from, uh, I think you'll be greatly impressed by what's said. People we've talked to are not only in government, but they're the business people. Go to any Main Street, go down Main Street, Monroe, Main Street, anywhere. Ask the landowners, the, the people there, if they're happy. Yes, they are seeing more traffic, it is a little bit disruptive, the calm has run away, but guess what? I live and look at the Vestal Parkway, and God bless us, the calm has gone away. I look down at SUNY Binghamton, a beautiful farm, and God, the calm has gone away. But guess what? It's brought prosperity to our town, and we applaud it. You have to make room for progress, and I suggest that if you have the right knowledge, you reach out to the right people, talk to the chambers of commerce, the churches, the charitable organizations, uh, certainly any of the supervisors, the superintendents of roads, uh, the school superintendents, the teachers, the teachers' unions, the hospitals, the doctors, and law enforcement. I think if you ask them, you're going to get answers that are going to start you, and it's also going to help you to be better informed and make the right decisions for your town. It is important. It is going to be life-changing, but progress is always life-changing. Thank you. Thank you. Would 41 through 50 please come up? I'm Aubrey Clark. I also live in Vestal. Um, I didn't know I was going to be following another Vestal resident who spoke on the other side of the issue. Um, I am very impressed that the town board would support the idea of a hearing because in Vestal we work tirelessly for that I, and uh, as of yet it hasn't happened. So. I'm here to support my friends who somehow were persuasive enough to make this happen. Um, uncertainty and fear of the effects from hydro, high volume hydrofracking are already affecting New York State housing market. There was an article in the New York Times on Friday um, about what's going on in the Catskills, which has traditionally been a wonderful place for people to buy property, whether it's a first home or a second home. And now there is a, quite a depreciation in the housing market there. And in fact, recently in New York, I ran into someone who was waiting on me in a store who he and his wife had um, a, a contract on a house in Hancock and they decided to bow out because of what might potentially be happening in Hancock. Uh, locally, many of us are talking among ourselves about the possibility of moving away, although that's done with great reluctance. Um, but it's certainly something that we live in fear of and obviously it has already affected the quality of our lives. Um, there is, as somebody else had mentioned, a reluctance to put unnecessary money into improving properties because of this uncertainty. According to Greg May, the Vice President of Residential Mortgages of Tompkins County Trust, New York State mortgages are inclusive of mineral rights in that most of them are understood to go all the way down to the center of the earth and all the way up to the sky. A gas lease signed by homeowners who have a mortgage jeopardizes the mortgage's legality and the bank has the right to cancel it. I believe that New York is different in this regard than in Pennsylvania. 
If insurance is withdrawn on the basis of a gas lease, there is no mortgage without it. A mortgage has to be covered by insurance, or a home has to be covered with homeowner's insurance. And I think you probably know that Nationwide, among others, has uh, refused all connections with fracking in terms of, of homeowner's insurance. I believe they're one of the biggest in the country. Unfortunately, risks from high-volume hydrofracking in residential areas are not contained to the property where drilling takes place. Compulsory integration, a questionable law passed in 2005, and I think some people think it will be challenged, means that if 60% of the land mass near you is under control of the gas industry, the residents... Thank you. Good evening. Uh, my name is Robert Wedlake. I live on East Hill Road. I lived in the town of Shenango since about 1981. I'm a lawyer. I've been doing this gas leasing stuff for over four years. I've done a lot, a lot of it, and uh, I can tell you I've seen a lot, probably a lot more than anybody in this room, aside from Mr. Kukowski. Uh, first of all, I'm going to indicate that I have submitted some written comments to your town attorney. You currently have a zoning ordinance in the town of Shenango that would not permit gas drilling. Therefore, you don't need a moratorium to stop any gas drilling. Your current zoning ordinance would, would preclude a gas driller from coming in and drilling. I've uh, provided Mr. Walls with a land use moratorium guide, which is not put out by frackers or anti-frackers. It's put out by the New York State Department of State, and it sets forth the criteria that you have to have to have a legal moratorium. One of the criteria is that the moratorium not disproportionately fall on the board, burden some, of, some landowners more than others. And I think that this moratorium, if passed, would have an imp, uh, a, uh, imp, would fall proportionally uh, on some landowners more than others. Secondly, you have to have a valid public purpose to have a legal moratorium. Again, this has got nothing to do with fracking or, 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 or uh, anti-fracking. It's what the law is. And uh, I would submit to you, because your current ordinance uh, does prohibit any zoning, uh, the zoning ordinance does prohibit any fracking, that you don't have a public purpose to pass this. So, uh, you know, I would submit to you that some, some real problems from a loca uh, legality standpoint. Right now, I'm representing landowners that are suing the city of Binghamton with respect to the city of Mor uh, Moratorium. That's still out, you know, the jury's still out on that. But I've already been contacted by some town Shenango residents. I haven't solicited the calls with respect to possibly commencing litigation against the town. Um, I agree with a lot of the other stuff that you've heard already today. I can tell you that my practice also includes real estate. We have an office, a full-time office, down in Scranton, Pennsylvania. Because of that, we see a lot of what's going on in Pennsylvania. I can tell you, go try to buy property in northern Pennsylvania. You hear the speaker saying the land values have plummeted. The opposite is true. Try make it buy an acreage here in Broome County. Try it. You'll find that the cost of the acreage has, has gone up because largely of gas drilling. The town of Vestal had a revaluation. All the taxes went up because of the revaluation. It's a balancing test, uh, ladies and gentlemen. You have to look at the negative and the positive. Sure, there are some negative. I'm not going to stand here and tell you there's never been a problem. But have we seen hundreds and hundreds of problems in Pennsylvania? No. There's been a handful granted. But the benefits, the Apple Oregon tax, the national security interest, the energy benefits, the jobs, the economics, I submit to you that the positive attributes outweigh the negative attributes. Thank you very much. I'm Dr. Adrian Sumner. I'm here tonight because I think it's important for you to hear from someone who has unfortunately had firsthand experience dealing with the consequences of fracking. I recently moved to New York from Pennsylvania where I own a house with seven and a half acres of land that I purchased just over a year ago. My first home, a home I had worked for, sacrificed and saved for, and dreamed about for years that I specifically chose because of its quiet location, because I suffer from migraines. Unfortunately, soon after moving in, the area across the street from me, what had been acres and acres of trees, started being cleared out. Huge tanks were brought in, and they opened a water refilling station, causing 40 trucks an hour to pass 24 hours a day, seven days a week in front of my home to pick up water and bring it to the multiple fracking sites down the road. 
The noise and the vibrations of the trucks and the water pumps was unbearable. My quiet, peaceful home became a torture chamber. I couldn't sleep. I had a migraine every day. I would sit at the bottom of my stairs because it was the quietest place in my house and cry for hours because I was in so much pain. I had to go on sleeping pills just to be able to get a few hours of very poor sleep a night, and some nights I would give up on sleep entirely, go to work and sit in my office just to get away from the noise. At first I complained, and I was told that I was overly sensitive, and I was the only one bothered, but of course this was a lie. One of my neighbors said that the lack of sleep was hurting her marriage because she was so tired and they were so cranky and fighting all of the time. Another neighbor who was ill and homebound, uh, the noise and the lack of sleep was causing her stress and panic attacks and worsening her condition. Another neighbor had very bad allergies and the smell of the diesel fumes and the air that was being kicked up into the uh, clouds of dust uh, all the time was causing her problems. None of us wanted to open our windows or go out into our yard or sit on our porches because of the noise and the vibrations and the dust and the smell. The truck traffic caused increased commuting times. Trucks practically ran us off the narrow country road. The roads literally started crumbling and falling apart and then we had to deal with the construction when they decided to repair and widen out those roads. My neighbors and I complained repeatedly, and we were repeatedly dismissed. I now own a home I literally cannot live in. Not surprisingly, it won't sell. I've had to take on extra work in order to pay for both a mortgage and for rent in an apartment. I'm not sure how much longer I can afford to do this, and even if my house does sell, I will never get back what I paid for it barely a year ago. The primary arguments for allowing fracking in New York seem to be that one, it will be beneficial to New Yorkers, and two, that it's unfair that people right across the border are profiting while New Yorkers are not. It's important to realize that for every person that would benefit, there will be just as many people who will end up having negatively impacted effects. And yes, while there are definitely people who are profiting right across the border in Pennsylvania, there are just, many, just as many people like me who are losing everything that they've worked for. And those people who are profiting are profiting at the pain and the suffering and the expense of others like me. Thank you. Steve Hers, I live in the town of Windsor. Uh, I'm not going to take three minutes. You've heard almost everything that I had want to say. You've heard several times. Spoken probably a lot more eloquently than I. I'm just going to give you three quick scenarios, uh, all true. Um, a couple years ago, I was invited to PCC to an engineering class. I spoke to that class about uh, gas drilling, about landowner issues. Uh, after the class was over, about six of the kids, six of the individuals called me, um, asked me where I would suggest they go for jobs. Uh, three of them called me back a second time. I sent them to Pennsylvania, suggested they go down there for jobs. It, within a week, they called me back and said all three of them had, had, had found jobs. These are our BCC kids, uh, our kids. Um, but April 11th of last year, I coordinated a job fair, natural gas job fair at BCC. We had uh, 2,300 individuals, 2,300 individuals. Most of them came looking for jobs. There was 56 uh, representatives of the gas industry and affiliated industry. These were folks that did built GPS systems, uh, did hydro seeding. Um, they hired a lot of these people. Unfortunately, they hired these people to work in Pennsylvania. Uh, the job fair was a, an unqualified success, except that the jobs weren't in New York State. Um, the last thing I want to tell you, and I did promise I wouldn't take three minutes, so I better not, is I was at a seminar a while ago where the town of Bradford, Pennsylvania, the supervisor was there. And he said to me, he said to us in the audience, he said, yes, we've had some problems. And one of the problems he pointed out, this is Bradford County, Pennsylvania, Supervisor said, one of the problems we have is increased traffic at the red light. We have increased traffic at the red light. He said, we have no lines at the unemployment office. Thanks for your time. Thank you. Um, hello, I'm Sue Ruff, uh, number 43. I live at 6 Cold Road in the town of Chenango. And I, I want to start by thanking you very, very much. It's a long night, and you're going to be hearing um, a lot more speakers after me. And I don't want to repeat all of the things that I've, you've already heard. So I'll submit my written comments. Um, just a couple of observations, um, because I've been observing this for the last four years, and I've been a town resident for uh, quite a while. Um, I live in an area of the town that has a lot of springs that bubble up. And I also live downhill from the airport. 
And when the community started talking about fracking, I called the health department and I said, I'm a little worried. What happens if there's a runoff accident up at the airport and they have a well up there? And the person from the health department said, I don't know what I can tell you. I said, well, will you, will you have enough people to help monitor um, water issues and health issues? He said, no, ma'am, we won't. And I haven't heard that um, the county is going to be able to protect us. Um, the other, a couple of other observations. Um, on the, the road that I live, a few years ago, a neighbor told me a new home was built and a well driller um, uh, put in a, a drilled well. And he went down quite a ways. And like all well drillers, they pump out all the water and to see how long it's gonna take for it to refill. And when he did that, nine homes lost water for two days along that road because they all share a common aquifer. And so when people talk to you about worries about water, it's because we share the water, we share the aquifer. A number of pro-gas signs have gone up in my community, in my neighborhood. And when that has happened, the neighbors next door or across the street put up for sale signs. And in the last two years, those homes have not sold. So yes, I do worry about property values. I worry about it very much. And my home is my biggest investment. It is for everybody. I don't have the answers for you, other than to say, this country has always had this tension between individual rights and community rights. You are the ones who are our elected officials who are going to have to balance what is best for individuals and what is best for the community. Thank you. Thank you for giving the community time to come and talk to you. study that was taken, a survey that was taken on Brosman Road. They said 100% of the area was canvassed. I had family, I had friends on that road. Never asked. As far as selling gas outside of the area or outside of the country, great. Let's be, let's be less dependent on the people that want to come up here and kill us. As far as young people, where are they? Where are the young people that are going to have to live with us for, for how many years? Where are they? I can tell you where my two daughters are. One's in North Carolina, one's in Tampa, along with many other people that have graduated from this high school. They've left the area because there's nothing here for them. As far as the quick cash, royalties will be here for many, many years. Mortgages. My company is trying to purchase a mortgage out west, Shimon County area. I've been to several banks. They have no problem giving me a loan when I don't have the gas for so, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Richard Matthews, 2 John Smith Road. I've been living in the town of Shenango for 38 years. Raised my family there. Uh, thank you for the opportunity tonight. Um, I also volunteer in Pennsylvania with a land trust. Its mission is to protect natural places. And I've had lots of opportunity to talk with landowners, many of them who have signed gas leases and many of them who have not signed gas leases. And also in their discussions, talking with gas company representatives in the same meeting. And the theme for every one of those discussions is the same. And the concerns are exactly the same. Those lists of concerns include great opportunity for making money, the desire to protect the water and the air and the environment, 
concerns about roads and traffic, promise of lots of jobs, derived benefits for local hotels, restaurants, keeping the forest pure. Lots, the, the concerns are the same. I'm talking from the gas companies, from the people who have leased and the people who have not leased. The concerns are the same. The difference is in the priorities. People who have signed gas leases, and they all have different reasons for doing so, some to protect the farm, some just to make money, they have a, a higher priority of making money in the short term. People who do not want to lease and have a big farm or they have a forest plot, or maybe they have leased and now realize that their hickory stand that they've always loved to go nut get nuts and things from, the gas company is now going to clear cut it and they have no control over it. They realize that their, their choice, their priorities is what's led them in their decision making and it's made a difference in terms of the outcome. So in working in our, in near Dimmick, Pennsylvania, um, the land, many of the landowners that we've talked to after they've leased and come and said, what can I do to protect this part of my property? And we go back and say, what does your lease say? And it usually says they have no say over where the wells go or depends on the lease. Duke University in 2011 did a study. They came in specifically about water, and they studied water wells that are in residences near active gas and residences not near active gas. And this is their quote. In aquifers overlying the Marcellus and Utica shale formations in Northeast Pennsylvania and upstate New York, we document Systematic evidence for methane contamination of drinking water associated. Sorry. We're gonna we're gonna take a seven seventh inning break here.